And we are back here for the fourth quarter of overtime. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It's been a great show. Kicking it off. Gerald, man, it's your time, man. Let, let's talk some Colonel football. I might start tearing up, man. Go ahead. All right. You know, you've been here four years. I had some big moments. Had some rough ones. Yeah, uh, no doubt. You know what? Let's, let's – Start with really. Let's start with the lowest. Ended on a positive note. Like, what to you as a player? You know, what was really the lowest point in your career? Really, I mean, you look at the way the seasons have gone since I've been here, and you look at kind of just the overall. I don't think there's an overall low because, from a competitive standpoint, when you're losing, everything's low. Nothing's good. So, you just have to. Take what you can from the tape, take what you can from practice, and just try and get better week in and week out. And I think, I can't really tell you what the biggest low is just because the wins and losses were never where we wanted them to be. So, as a competitor and as, I don't know, I just feel like when you're losing, it's always low. So, I can't, I can't, I can't spot one in particular. But as far as the highs go, man, I, you just look at, I, I never I think realized. I know we, we can, moment your point then. I well, think I know which way you're a going. A moment, yes, but just overall, I think when you get into college and when I don't know, when you realize your career is coming to an end. In high school I never really felt like that because I knew I was going to be playing college football somewhere. And I, I just knew in high school after your last game, it was kind of like, alright, on to the next. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't cry. I didn't get real worked up emotionally. And I think you realize now when people say the, the friendships and the memories. And, I mean, because I can tell you right now, I don't remember any of the scores. We won the Texas State game, I don't remember the score. You don't remember the scores. And you remember the relationships. And when you look at the guys I've played with, I've had the most fun this year playing football with because of the guys I've played with in my group, with the guys I've played with on offense, with the guys I've played with on this team, more so because of my position. You look at the Nickel State University, the O train, the offensive line. Those guys really were a complete pleasure to be around. I love them with all my heart. They're brothers to me, man. Without a doubt, those guys have made my last year of football enjoyable, regardless of the wins and losses, great they went with one of them. But those guys really are special. They're on the great things. And just the jokes in the locker room, the jokes in the meeting rooms, just the, the focus when it's needed, the lack of focus when it's okay to be lack of when it's, when it's okay to relax. Just we never got too high, we never got too low, we stayed the same. We knew as a group and as a unit that we needed to be the group that the team could depend on to never lose their cool. And I think we did that. And I think that's why next year that offensive line unit will be one of the best in the conference and one of the best in the country. And I think this year, if you look at it, like I said, if you look at it from our perspective, I know according to the stat book, we gave up a lot of sacks, but a lot of those went on us. A lot of those, sometimes they're running back, sometimes they're they're just designed where the quarterback has to read a hot guy, and if the quarterback doesn't read the hot guy, we have to, I mean, the sacks go on us, and we know that. But that's why, just this year, how much better we got as an offensive line was amazing to see. And a lot of credit goes to Coach Jabriel, and a lot of credit goes to the guys, Ryan Zeller, Tyler Knowles, Brandon Holmes, Chris Borderman, Rafe Blazon, Caleb Klein, Eric Hall, Joe Bonner, Bossy Salimu, Brad Morgan helped us out a lot. I mean, Jared Bro, there's just tons of guys. Hopefully I didn't forget anybody from did. I'm sorry, brother. But I, it's just, it, it's insane how fast it is. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned something we talk about a lot on this show is how you progress as a team, yeah, right, as a player. Exactly. And I came here and uh, coached Stubbs his first year as a head coach when they pretty much revamped the entire program. And it has been revamped. A and it has. Don't get it twisted. The wins and losses, you and I have talked about this before. The wins right. and losses, you know, they're not exactly there. But from the first year that Coach Stubbs got here, I mean, you're taking a whole new scheme, a whole new outlook, really. Just not, not even from a game plan standpoint but from a program standpoint of how you approach the game, how you approach life. Right. And I think Subs is doing a great job here. And offensively, I'll tell you this right now. Um, going back to uh, when Q was the starting quarterback. And that Q first meaning LaQuinton Cass, the number three Cass. senior wildcat slash wide receiver quarterback, running back. Freaking playmaker. Playmaker. <laughs> but 
You know, I mean, especially from an offensive line standpoint, I mean, those last two years, yeah, y'all did give up, you know, yeah. a good amount of sacks. Right. But this year, I mean, you could definitely see the improvement. The offense was able to move the ball, and that's what it's all about. It's about exactly. progression. Exactly. And I'll tell you one thing we didn't have on our team and that we wouldn't take on our team, and that was Divas, baby. No Divas. And we're about to talk Divas on the fourth quarter here on overtime, baby. All right, Mike, let's go to it. Divas in sports, man. Who, what did we get between Facebook, Twitter? We had all kinds of things happen. Tell, tell us what we got, man. Ryan Hensley, a guy I worked with at Sports Authority, passionate sports fan. I got into a lot of arguments with him, but I'm all with him on this one. Uh, I'd love to pick a wide receiver here, but I feel that's the easy way out. Right now, in my opinion, with all the talk, all the hype, and the fight still hasn't happened, the biggest diva is Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Money Mayweather. Guy runs his mouth, appears appears on wrestling, always self-promoting, not backing it up. Typical diva behavior. I'm with him on that, man. Uh, uh, I, I want to uh, see the Pac-Man Mayweather yeah, fight. Yeah, I know. I know there's a lot of drama between that. And he is diva. And you see a lot of divas in those individual sports where guys kind of only have to worry about themselves. And I'll tell you one. Where, where, where's your boy at, man? He put it in that overtime status. Uh, I can't wait. There it is. Okay. Biggest divas in sports. Your boy, Shane Con Conradi. Yes. He says, Hope Solo makes it hard for me to wear sweatpants. Wow, diva. Because <laughs> Hope Solo <laughs> is a diva. Oh, There's yeah, no dude. No doubt, man. Yeah. And uh, she, had, I'm pretty sure she got kicked off the USA's national team at one point in time. Everybody knows Hope Solo. Obviously, she's a good-looking goalkeeper for the United States Olympic women's soccer team. But she definitely is a diva, and people, uh, people don't like that. And... Obviously, your boy Shane likes her more than most. All right. Another, so. another diva that was tweeted to us, uh, Deion Sanders by Nick Scialfo, who Nick Scialfo, man. Yeah, hey. no doubt. He, Nichols, he, Nichols tight end. Nichols dude. tight end. I'll tell you what, Nick Scialfo. <laughs> you know, we get in the games, and, and Nick will be playing, and I'll be in. You know, I play center, so I'm in every snap. Tight ends are alternate. Nick plays a lot of snaps, but, you know, with different formations, we don't use tight ends sometimes. So Nick, I'll be I'll be chipping around, chipping away a little bit with my defensive tackle or whatever. He'll say something, and then I like to bait guys because I like to get guys fired up when they do something stupid and get the flat. But I'm not. I, that's just how I like to do it because I don't I, like I said I have respect for the game. I don't like to necessarily talk smack and run my mouth. Not saying Nick does either. But some guy will be telling me something, I'll be like, yeah, all right, da-da-da-da. And here comes Nick Scalfo. Nick will say, yeah, da-da-da-da-da, like start mouthing off the guy. And then Nick's out the huddle. i got to block him the next play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nick's talking smack to this 350-pound Polynesian dude from Oregon State last week. And then Nick, we bring in a different formation, and there goes Nick. Now i got to block the pissed off uh, defensive lineman. So, uh, leave it up to Nick. That's one of the memories I'll definitely have of old Skelly Skelfo. Oh, uh, Skelfo, We need to get Skelly back on the show. Oh, man. absolutely. I was Skelly, talking to him, to him about it, man. You back on overtime. Nick Skelfish Skelfo. That's it. But, uh, no, another one, Andrew Dolan, our kicker. You oh, know? God. I, he told me about it. Oh, okay. dude. All right. You want to talk about a troll on Twitter? He... At KNSU at overtime, and then at me and Gerald. The biggest diva has to be, any tagged a minute, Ocho Cinco, because he never retweets me. <laughs> Hashtag, he's too cool. <laughs> Dolan, Dolan tries to get his Twitter game up by getting retweets from guys like like Chad Ocho Cinco. Josie Altidore. But, exactly, but, you know, it just doesn't usually work out for him. I'm going to go ahead and give you my two right now, because we're closing up. We're getting towards the end of the show. We're approaching 1 o'clock. Here we go. I'm, I'm ready, man. Go. You ready for this? Yeah. Number one, Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. Got to be Jay Cutler because quarterbacks should not handle themselves that way on the field with their coaches. That is not how you lead a football team. Granted, he might not be spiking the ball. He might not be doing all that stuff. But he should. He is a diva in that aspect because when he starts getting hit, you start hearing about it way too much than you should. And number two, I'm going to surprise some people because some people might call him cheap. I'm going with Monage. He's a diva. Yeah. I don't like. I, I hate the way he flops. You know, he's the king of, you know, acting like he got hurt. He'll complain to the refs all game. Manu Ginobili. I'm a Hornets fan. I hate the Spurs. My roommate is from San Antonio, Landry Con. <laughs> quarterback to the Nick State Colts. On, loves the freaking San Antonio Spurs. Cannot stand them. Cannot stand them. And my two divas, uh, one that's detrimental to the teams, yes. T.O. Uh, this no guy's doubt. career has been overshadowed by his diva-ish ways. Um, despite being a phenomenal 
talent, one of the best receivers to ever play. Then, one that wasn't detrimental to his team, Broadway Joe. Joe Namath. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. What a diva, but the guy guarantees Super oh, Bowls between, and he wins Between them. the magazine ads with him, I mean, practically with no clothes on, to, uh, everybody was giving Joe, Joe crap. And remember when Sanchez did like his GQ and did all his model and stuff, everybody was giving him crap. But he wasn't doing what Namath was. Now, so, Namath was winning games. Namath was exactly. winning championships. And that, at the end of the day, is what matters. All right, baby. That's a wrap here on Overtime. I'm Big Red. I'm Hody. Mike, the jersey. Mike, there the you go. Mike Cotard. Call yourself all the names. Yeah, man. I mean, you got to throw them out there. Why but, not? Tune in tomorrow for Cortland and Mike Miz on your stage. Also, Carolyn right. Noble will be Carolyn out. will be in on right, Wednesday. Nichols the Canadian inside. sensation, baby. She's going to be out and about in the studio. So, tune in. 12-1 to with Cortland. The court marshal, Mike Mishersey, and Carolyn Noble on overtime, 12 to 1, same time, same place, 91.5 KNSU. 